Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, previously at UCLA and some other institutions. I'm back today with another one of my videos about the topic in Norse language and myth, and today I'm continuing with a series of videos I've begun talking about individual poems in the Poetic Edda. Previously, I've talked about Wolisbal, the creation and destruction of the world, Hovamal, Odin's advice and mysteries, Lokasena, Loki's insults to the gods, and today I'll be talking about Horvars Ljod, the argument between Thor and Odin. Horvars Ljod is another poem from the Poetic Edda, which is a compilation of about 30 poems written down in Iceland in the 1200s in Old Norse. Many of these poems, including Horvars Ljod, can be dated by linguistic features to much earlier than the 1200s, and because of this, the Poetic Edda is usually considered our most cohesive and most archaic witness to the myths of the Norse gods and heroes. I'll be reading in this video both from the original Old Norse text and from my translation of Horbrazio that appears in my translation of the Poetic Edda, released in 2015 by Hackett Publishing Company. Horbrazio, its title, can be read fairly simply. Ljod is a song or poem and Horvars is a possessive form. Notice the possessive S that's similar to the apostrophe S we use for position in English, like Jackson's book or the university's parking space or something like that. And Horvars is the possessive form of the name Horvardr, which is gray beard. Hor is cognate from the same root as the English word hoary, as in old and gray, and Bardr is cognate with English beard. So this is simply Greybeard, Greybeard's song or Greybeard's poem. And Horbardr, Greybeard, is the nickname taken by Odin in this poem. Now it is not at all unusual for Odin to take on a different name. In the poem Grimnismal in the Poetic Edda, he takes on the name Grimnir, Shattered Face, and he lists 52 other names that he has taken in different disguises, including Horbarder. So not at all unusual for Odin. And when Odin appears to Thor in this poem, Thor does not seem to recognize him. Thor addresses him consistently as Horbarder, as someone else. Now, Odin does seem to have some kind of power to cloud people's minds and make them not recognize that it's him. In the saga of the Volsungs, Odin appears to the human hero Sigurdr no less than three times, and each time Sigurdr fails to recognize who he is. So this is pretty classic Odin. It's also not unusual that Odin appears as a fairy man. We have another instance of Odin appearing on a fairy. Again, in the Volsung material, Odin appears to take away the Volsung hero Sinfjotli on a fairy. That's both in the Poetic Edda and in the Saga of the Volsungs. Uh, my translation of the Saga of the Volsungs will appear in September from Hackett Publishing Company. Odin and Thor have a rivalry that is not really suggested by their depiction in popular culture. I remember when I saw the first Thor movie, the first Marvel Thor movie, and Odin, the Odin character in that movie gets mad at the Thor character for, quote, bringing war to a peaceful realm. Well, this is not in the character of Odin as preserved in the Eddas. The Odin of the Eddas would have said, you brought war to a peaceful realm and probably have high-fived Thor. Because in fact, Odin's grand purpose is to build up his army for Ragnarok. And to do that, he stirs up wars among human beings so that those who die in battle, he can harvest for his army in Valhalla to help defend him and Oskar, the realm of the gods, at Ragnarok. So Odin is a much more ambiguous and in some sense a selfish character than his depiction in popular culture often suggests. I think in the 19th, 20th, 21st centuries, we've sort of overlaid our own notion that an old man, an old character like Odin should be restrained, controlled, peaceful, whereas the younger Thor should be fiery and hot-headed. But it's almost the other way around in the legitimate medieval tradition. Odin wants to stir up war, he wants chaos, whereas Thor is a figure of order who brings 
peace for humankind by defending us against the giants. And in this poem, as Thor and Odin exchange insults, very frequently one of them will recount what he was doing at one point. And usually Odin will say something like he was stirring up an unnecessary war, or he was sleeping with a woman, or something like that. Whereas Thor will say, well, I was out fighting giants. So Thor is all business and all defensive, justifiable business, whereas Odin spends quite a bit of his time on his own gratification. This poem is about 60 stanzas. Some of the stanzas are very short, as you'll see. So sometimes if I say a stanza and I quote it and it's just two lines long, it's not a partial stanza, that's actually the whole thing sometimes. Unlike Voloswav, which is consistently in the Fournir the Sog meter, Hovamal, which is consistently more or less Leo the Hotr, Horvazioth goes back and forth among many different meters. But it does have many archaic linguistic features, like the filler word ov, inflected past participles with the verb hava, things like that that Old Norse people care about that look pretty old. So it's possible that some of these stanzas are not preserved in their entirety, but fairly likely that those that are preserved there are are old. And as a last note, the text of this poem is a little bit unusual among the poems of the Poetic Edda because it's preserved not just in the main manuscript, where most of the poems of the Poetic Edda are preserved, the Codex Regius, but also in most of it is preserved in a manuscript called AM 748 1 Quarto, which contains some other Eddic material, including the only uh, copy of the poem Baldurstram or Baldur's Dreams. All right, so in this poem, as I've done with the other videos in the series, I'm going to read some of Horvaz in the process of summarizing it. I'll be reading in Old Norse from the original Old Norse text and also in English from my modern English translation. The Old Norse pronunciation that I'm going to use is reconstructed Old Norse pronunciation rather than the modern Icelandic pronunciation that's become popular for Old Norse in the last century or so. I have videos that talk about that in annotations in the video description below. I'll be using annotations frequently here. Annotations should appear as little speech bubbles on the screen. You may need to not be on a mobile device or to uh, change some settings on your ad blocker to see those if you don't see them when you watch this video. So Horvars the Oath. Thor comes to a ferry traveling on foot and apparently alone, and he sees a ferryman out on the water on his boat. And he calls out to the ferryman, he says, bring the ferry over here and take me across and I'll give you some food. I ate breakfast before I left and I'm still full from that, but I've got good food, herring and goat. And Odin, who is the ferryman disguised as Horbarther, gets right at insulting Thor. He says in stanza four, Orlegum vercum rosar thu verdenum, veitsta tu vergorla, dopper eruthin heimkini, deud higek athin moderse. You're boasting about your breakfast, but you don't know if your homecoming will be glad. I think your mother is dead. Thor is a little bit taken aback by this and doesn't seem to know how to respond, except that this would be bad news to anybody that his mother is dead. And Odin keeps pushing him and says, you know, you look poor. You don't look like a landowner. You're barefoot even, and you don't even look like you own a good pair of pants. Actually, that line could be interpreted as him saying, you don't own your pants, as if Thor's had to rent pants. Well, Thor is getting irritated, and he says in stanza seven, Styrdu hingat ekuni, ek won ther stotna kena, et a hwer o skipet er thu helder vit landit. Row that boat over here, I'll show you the landing. Who owns that ship that you're on? Well, Odin responds that a wise and provident man named Hildolf owns the ship, and he told him, only to take good people and people that he recognized over the over the fjord. He told him not to bring horse thieves and beggars. All right, he's still needling Thor about looking poor. And then he says, what's your name, traveler? And of course, Thor says, well, I'll tell you my name. I'm no criminal and I'm from a good family. This is Thor, son of Odin that you're dealing with. All right, he still clearly doesn't know it's Odin. He says, well, what's your name? And Odin responds and stands at 10. Horbar the Reketi Hilk um Navan Sjaldan. Greybeard is my name. I rarely lie about that, which is probably the biggest lie Odin has ever told. Thor responds to that and stands 11. 
What skull to of Navan Hilya, Nemathu Sakar, Egir? Why would anyone lie about that except to conceal some crime? And Odin's further response in stanza 12 En thoth ek Sakar Ega, tho monek forda fjorviminu, fir slikem sem thuert, nema ek fegersio. Whether or not I committed crimes, I'd still want to defend my life against people like you, unless my fated day had come. Well, Thor says that he would pay the slanderer back for his words if he could get across the fjord, but he doesn't want to wade out there and get his ogr wet. And this word ogr that appears in the manuscript, and unfortunately this is before the part that's in AM 748 one quarter, so this, these early stanzas only appear in the Codex Regis. This word ogr has never been satisfactorily explained. Some people think that it's Thor's penis, that he doesn't want to wander out there and get his 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 dingus wet, and uh, others see potentially a connection with a Celtic word for pants, and so that's how I take it. I think he's just saying he doesn't want to get his pants wet. Well, Odin says he'll wait right there, right? Come on, come on into the water if you want to fight me, Thor, but that he'll find that he is Thor's hardest opponent since Hrungnir. Now, Thor's fight with Hrungnir is recorded by Snorri Sturluson in his prose edda. Uh, Hrungnir is a giant with a head of stone that uh, Thor has a memorable duel with while Hrungnir stands on his shield. It's kind of a long story. But interestingly, that fight is another instance of Thor and Odin's rivalry because Thor, in his fight with Hrungnir, kind of gets Odin out of a difficulty that he's talked himself into. Well, Thor says in stanza 15, Hence fil tu nu geta, ervet hrungnir deldum. So in storud giotn, er or steni var hofudet o, tho lete kan falla, og firr nika, hvat van tu tho medan horvarder. You want to talk about when I killed hrungnir, that arrogant giant with a stone head? I knocked him down, I laid him out flat. What were you doing, meanwhile, Greybeard? And this begins a constant repetition of this phrase. What vatu medon, or what vatu tho medon. What were you doing, meanwhile, or what were you doing then, meanwhile? This word is sometimes left out. Each one asked the other one what he was doing while well, he was doing some characteristic thing. All right, so... Odin says in response, what he was doing was he was with someone named Fjolvar, and they were waging war, proving themselves, and sampling the local ladies. And Thor says, oh, how did the women treat you? And Horvartha responds with a long stanza that's not totally clear. Sparkar otum ver konur evos at spokum irdi, horskar otum ver konar evos holar veri, ther or sandi Sima undu okor dali dupum grundum grovu, varth ek them en olum, evri at rodum, will the ek hyo them sistrum siao, ok have the ek ged there alto gaman, what van to thor medan thor. We had girls who liked to kick, but sometimes they would act docile. We had wise women too, and sometimes they were loyal. Some of them wound some thread from a valley out of the sand. I made them all submit to my will. I slept with seven sisters, had all their charms to myself. What were you doing, meanwhile, Thor? By the way, some of these explicitly sexual stanzas where Odin talks about seducing different women are left out of older translations where the where explicit sexual activity was often considered sort of scandalous. So it's always a good idea to go to translations that are not in the public domain, i.e. not free on the internet, because they're more likely to contain the whole poem. Well, Thor says in response, he was out killing Thiazzi. And he mentions that this giant that he killed, he threw his eyes into the sky to make stars. This is interesting because in Skoldskoppermal, part of Snorri's Edda, Thor does take someone's body part and turn them into stars. He takes, uh, well, he takes the toe of someone named Aurvandil and throws that into the sky to make a star which is called in Old Norse, Arvandil's Toe, Arvandil's Toe. This is the same name preserved in Old English 
for the evening star, Eärendel, Eärendel, which is used, of course, by J.R.R. Tolkien in his Lord of the Rings mythology. Well, oh, and by the way, according to Snorri, it is actually Odin who threw Thiazzi's eyes into the sky as stars. So either this is a variant version or Odin and Thor arguing about who did what, sort of subtly. Well, of course, now Odin says, well, I was out killing Thiazzi. What were you doing, meanwhile? Greybeard. And in Sansa 20, Odin, or Greybeard, says, Miklar man velar, ek havda vid mjökrider, Thor ek velta ther for verum. Hardan jotun ek hugda hlebart vera, gav han mer gambantein, en ek velta han orviti. In Sansa 21, Thor says, Illum huga, lana vir thu, tho godar gjavar. To which Odin responds in Sansa 22, Dat hever ek er of anari skevr, um sik er hueri sliku, what van to medan Thor. In my translation, Greybeard said, Great seductions. In the night I was ridden by women stolen from their husbands. I think Hlebarth was a strong giant. He gave me a magic wand, and I enchanted away his wits. Thor said, You repaid him badly for his good gift. Greybeard said, A tree has only the space it can crowd another out of. Every man must look out for himself. What were you doing, meanwhile, Thor? Now, a few comments on this part. For one thing, the Thor said, Greybeard said, is actually not in the main text of the manuscript, but it's out in the margins in the Codex Regius. We see just a, a letter Thorn standing for Thor, sometimes with a Q for the X word Kvad spoke, or a letter H for Horvarther, indicating which lines are said by which person. Some people have seen this as a sign that perhaps this poem was performed, that these are cues for actors, sort of like uh, with Locusena, perhaps. Another note is stanza 20 when Odin said that he was ridden by women the, in the night, the word in the Old Norse there, mirkrither, is a little bit ambiguous. You could take that as him talking about being ridden in the night, or this could be dark writers, night writers. These women are witches that he stole from their husbands. It's actually fairly probable that both meanings are kind of intended here. And I've always thought that this last part where Odin says, a tree has only the space it can crowd another out of, every man must look out for himself, is sort of the quintessential Odin quote from his somewhat more cynical uh, view of things, which is often an evidence in Hovamal. Well, Odin has asked Thor what he was doing meanwhile, and of course Thor says, well, I was killing giant women. I killed so many of them that I reduced their population such that if I had not done it, there would be no humans on the earth because there would be so many more giants. And what were you doing meanwhile, Horvarder? To which Odin responds that he was in Valland, some foreign land, making battles. And he says at the end of stanza 24, Odin o Jarla tho eri Valfala, and Thor o Thralakin. Odin receives the powerful men who fall in battle, and Thor receives their servants. It's not known if this reflects perhaps an alternative afterlife that we don't hear about elsewhere, where Thor might have received the spirits of some people after they died, but certainly Odin and his uh, hyper-martial attitude favors upper classes, men who lead, who lead kingdoms and lead armies rather than the foot soldiers. Odin responds in stanza 25 with a complaint not too different from a complaint that Loki brings against Odin and Lokasena. O Yavn Skipta er thu mindir met osum lidi er thu atir vilgi mikos vald. You deal out victory and defeat unfairly if you have so much power over battles. Well, Odin begins stanza 26 by saying, Thor o avl urit en eki hjarta. You have plenty of strength, Thor, but no courage. And then he brings up the story of Thor hiding in the glove of Utgar the Loki, which is a story told in Snorri's prose edda and something that Loki makes fun of Thor for and Lokasena also. Well, in Sansa 27, Thor finally calls him Horvarður in Ragi. Horvarður, the sissy, the cowardly, the effeminate. This is a word I discuss more in my video about Lokasena. And he says he would kill Horvarður if he could get across. 
To which Horvather responds, of course, well, you have no way to get across. Anyway, what were you doing meanwhile, Thor? Well, once again, Thor says, I was east fighting giants. What were you doing meanwhile? And Odin says, well, I was in the east enjoying myself with a certain lovely blonde someone. Well, Thor seems to just get distracted by this and says, oh, you had a good woman there. And Odin says, oh, yes, and I, it would have been great if I had had your help holding her down. Well, Thor says, I would have helped you. And Odin says, I don't know if I could have trusted you to have helped me. Thor says, well, I'm not some cheap old shoe in the springtime. This is apparently some kind of Norse proverb about shoes being sort of unreliable in the spring when they're coming apart. Well, Thor is then asked by Odin once again, what were you doing meanwhile? And once again, Thor was out fighting giants. To which Odin responds, well, how shameful fighting women. Thor says, well, they were more wolves than women. And uh, then he says, of course, what were you doing meanwhile? And Odin says, Sansa 40, Ek vark i hernum er hengat gordesk gnava gunfana ger at ryodar. I was with an army. We came this way to wave some war banners and get some spears bloody. So Thor recognizes this as a threat against the gods. They're apparently close enough to Oskar there that this, he interprets this army as having come to fight the Asir. Well, he says, you came to do the gods evil? And Odin says, oh, take this armoring. Uh, that will make it up to you. And Thor is just astonished at this kind of impudence. He says, and I'll read Sansa's 43 to 46 in Old Norse and then in English. Var namtu thessi in nivelligo or erek herda aldregi nivelligli. Horvar the kvad, name kat monum them inum aldronum er bua i hemeskogum. Thor kvad, thu gever thu got naven visium er thu kalar that hemeskoga. Horvar the kvad, swo demi ek umslikt var. Thor said, where did you learn to spit out all these hateful words? I know I've never heard more awful talk. Greybeard said, I learned this sort of talk from the old men who live in the forests of home. Thor said, you give a good name to burial mounds if you call them the forests of home. Greybeard said, that's how I talk about such things. <laughs> Whatever exactly all this exchange means. Uh, there's clearly a lot of frustration on Thor's side while Odin continues to keep his composure. So, once again, Thor says, I would beat you with my hammer if I could get across, and I bet you'd howl like a wolf if you felt my hammer on you. And Odin says that, uh, ha, you know, your wife is sleeping with someone else back at home. <laughs> it's actually surprising, or, or remarkable, really, how often the insults that Thor and Odin lob at each other remind one of the insults that Loki lobs at each of them in Lokasena. Well... Finally, Thor says, well, you know, you're just saying things that you know are going to make me mad. And uh, Thor, Odin says, well, I'm telling the truth, I think. Anyway, at this rate, you need to be getting on your journey because you're going to be late. Thor says, well, Horbarther and Ragi, you sissy Horbarther, you're the one who's made me late. And Odin says, well, I didn't think that the powerful Thor would let some peasant keep him from completing his journey. Thor says, stop this. Let me give you some advice. Row that boat over here and come and meet Thor. And Odin, of course, says, no. So Thor says, well, show me the way then. And so then we have the conclusion of Horvath's the Oath in stanzas 56 to 60. I'll read in Old Norse and then in English. Horvather, kvad, litet erat sinja, langt erat vara, stund erat til stoksens, honor til stansens. Altus wall to Venstris Vexens, once through Heter Verland, Tharmun Fjorgen, Hitti Hitta Thor Sonsen, Okmun Hon Kena Honum Otunga Brautir till Odenslanda. Thorquad, Munak Taka Thanga Tidag, Horvard the Quad, Taka with Vil Ok Ervidi at Upverandi Solu, Erek Get Thona. Thorquad, Skamt Mun Nu Mol Okatvera, Ostu Mer Skutingu Enis Farar. Launa munek there for senyun, a vit finumski sen anat. Or about the quad, far to nu, thar a thick happy alan gramir. Greybeard said, I won't deny that request, it's a long walk. Go to the tree trunk, then to the rock, then turn left till you reach Midgard. There your mother, the earth, will meet you, and she'll show you the god's road to Asgard. 
Thor said, can I get there today? Greybeard said, I suspect if you travel hard, you could be there before sundown. Thor said, I see this conversation is over. Since you only answer with insults, I will pay you back for this delay if we ever meet again. Greybeard said, go now and have a bad journey. So at the end of this conflict between Thor and Odin, we see pretty clearly the attributes of them that are emphasized in both the Eddas and in some of the sagas where they appear, like the Saga of the Volsungs or Gautrek's Saga. Thor is the common man's god who is concerned with doing his duty and fighting giants. So Odin is a little more selfish. He's a upper-class noble figure who uses people, uses both warriors for his army in Ragnarok and uses women for his sexual gratification. Very different gods. It reminds us that perhaps the Norse or some Norse believers were henotheistic, which is a kind of polytheism where one acknowledges the existence of many gods, but focuses, specializes sort of in the worship of one god and favors that god above the others. This certainly seems fairly probable in light of the negative things that are said by one god about another in Horvazio and also in Lokasena. Well, I hope this has been somewhat useful to you. I hope that if you continue to be interested in Norse myth and language that you'll check out some other videos on my channel, including my other videos about poems in the Poetic Edda. I also hope that this has encouraged you to rely not on handbooks and dictionaries of mythology published today, but to go all the way back to the primary sources and judge for yourself what they have to say. My translation of the Poetic Edda is easy to find, and for the Prose Edda, I recommend the translation by Anthony Falks. I also make the information in these videos available, available for free, because I don't think that knowledge does anyone any good locked in an ivory tower or behind archaic language. But I do have a Patreon page where you can support this video series if you would like, and I have some rewards for patron supporters, including a rune font, the ability to request translations, and uh, some additional translations that I sometimes do for patron supporters. For now, I'm wishing you all the best.